Charles get us all to stand and turn to page 311. Page 311. Each and every one that are listening by way of radio, also watching by way of Facebook. And we certainly appreciate you being with us today. Appreciate all the visitors that are with us today. And happy Father's Day to all the dads here this morning in the service. Those of you that are listening and watching, we hope you have a wonderful and a happy Father's Day today. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, let's pray for the service. Pray that God's will will be done. And uh, most of all, let's remember those today that are lost, that God would deal with their hearts and we could see them saved. Also, let's continue to pray for our troops, their families, our missionaries, and their families as well. Also, continue to pray for Kinley Edwards, James and Beulah Edwards, Melvin Franklin, Sandra Pendergrass, Donna Newton, Patsy McDonald, uh, Frank Jernigan, Darlene Hanford, I appreciate you praying for my wife. She went to the cardiologist on Wednesday, had a stress test and an echocardiogram done, and everything turned out really, really well. And I certainly thank the Lord for it. And the doc said all that uh, he could see was she had a, a valve that was leaking just a little bit, but nothing to be excited about. Uh, and said they'll rehearse it again in about five years. So hallelujah. I appreciate the answered prayer. Amen. And uh, so continue to pray for her. Also, Nate Bobbitt, Addison Lassiter, Alan Tysinger, uh, Tony and Brandy Bobbitt. Also, Brother Mike Adcock, remember him this morning. Donald Talbot, Sue Setliff, Sharon Kay, Melissa Woodard, Tammy Martin, Lee Thomerson, uh, Mary Lou Duncan, Connie Hendricks, Brian Carey Sr., Valerie Hendrick, Martha Stainback, Joe Owen, Stephanie Stafford, Evan and Janice Mitchell, Tony Hill, uh, David Painter, also remember Brother Snook and continue to pray for him. God will touch him. Also Marvin Robertson, John Matthews, Pat Matthews, and Sarah Gupton. And let's pray today that uh, as the choir sings that God will touch them 
the special music, the, the word of God as it's preached today, that everything that's done, the Lord would be magnified and glorified and uh, lifted up. Amen. And uh, but let's pray today the Lord's will be done and uh, trusting that he'll meet all the needs in all of our lives. I'm glad he can. No matter what you have need of this morning, I'm glad he's able. He's able. Amen. And so let's bow for prayer. And I'm going to ask Brother Ricky uh, Pendergrass if we'll come pray for us this morning. And as he leads us, let's just all pray together. Amen. Listen to uh, I, I, last night while I was, fell asleep. I was listening to Billy Graham. Listen to the shorts, you know, not the whole sermon, but Billy Graham's shorts. And uh, I subscribed to it. And he was preaching last night and had the little part in that where he's describing justified. He said justified is just as if I had never even seen it. Well, I like I like it. Went off up in there. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine that. I mean, it's just it's. That's how good he is. Just as if I'd never even seen him. I mean, just the thought of that, you know. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I don't know. But if you can't say that you have been justified, you're in trouble. You can't say that. Let's bow here. Lord God, we thank you this morning. But it's time that we just get to be here in your house, dear Lord. We thank you for all the many blessings. We ask you to just bless here this morning, the singing of the choir, and, and the Lord, and the preaching of your word. We pray, Lord God, for all the requests that was mentioned here this morning. We pray to just keep us all safe, dear Lord, and bless and meet every need. And most of all, we want to pray for the lost, dear Lord, that don't know you, that Lord and Savior. We pray that you let them know this morning, dear Lord, that they can also be just. By your name, we ask you to just bless it all in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
man. I guarantee you he'll be the dearest friend you'll ever have. Amen. Appreciate the songs this morning by the choir. Well, I want to get the ushers to come forward as we receive our morning offering as we worship through our giving this morning. And uh, while they're coming, let me make mention of a couple of things. Of course, again, today's Father's Day, and I hope you dads have a wonderful, wonderful day. And it's certainly good to have you with us here at Victory this morning. Also, now, don't forget, next Sunday is homecoming. We're certainly looking forward to homecoming, amen. And uh, so I hope that you'll make plans to be here, bring somebody with you. And uh, also, very one important thing that you need to bring, food, 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 amen. Uh, the church will have the chicken and uh, some other things possibly, and, uh, but we need vegetables and cakes and pies and Sweets, just anything sweet. Cover it with sugar, bring it. Amen. And uh, I don't know how they expect Baptist preachers not to be a diabetic uh, with all the food they have to eat everywhere they go. But it's good. Amen. And uh, But we want to invite you to be back with us next Sunday. Invite some of your family and friends to come back for homecoming next Sunday. And uh, Ricky Atkinson will be here uh, singing during the service. So we're certainly looking forward to that. Also, uh, two weeks from today, we'll be having Red, White, and Blue Sunday as we uh, think about it and pray for our country. And certainly, if there's ever been a year we need prayer, it's right now. And uh, so we need to uh, do that and encourage you, if you can, to wear Red, White, and Blue that Sunday. And uh, as we celebrate Red, White, and Blue Sunday on God and Country Day. And then on July the 11th through the 13th, is our vacation Bible school from 7 to 9 p.m. each night. And uh, then, of course, the 17th through the 22nd, all the young people will be going uh, to the Arise Youth Meeting over in Tennessee. And so you make, uh, please pray for that situation. God will give everybody safety. And uh, so, and then on the 31st of July, uh, we'll be having a, a big bash at Camp Car Lake uh, that afternoon starting at 2 o'clock. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. We'll say a lot more about it as it gets closer, but make plans on being there on that day as we have a lot of things coming up. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless the remainder of the service this morning. And uh, God would bless the offering uh, as it is received. Uh, Brother Shad, how about coming? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for your blessings. Thank you for everything you've given us. And Lord, in these dark times, as the world turns away from you, as, as, as they drift away, and Lord, just pray that we as believers would stand strong. Lord, be steadfast, be unmovable. Lord, not shaken in our faith. Lord, and as the world grows darker, let our lights shine ever so brighter. Lord, I just ask now that you would open up our hearts for the message today. And, Lord, just be with us. Have your spirit moving in this building today. Lord, I just pray now you bless this offering that it might be used for your honor and glory. And all these things I ask in the name of Jesus, my Savior. Amen.
Amen. Well, again, it's Father's Day. We always like to recognize all the dads in the service. So I'm going to get all the dads that will to stand this morning. All the fathers in the building, if you'll stand up. Amen. We want you to know we appreciate you being here today. Let's give them all a hand this morning. Thank you. Happy Father's Day to each and every one of you this morning. All right. You can be seated. And uh, we want to recognize uh, the oldest father this morning in the service. And uh, do we have a dad in here that's 85 or older? How old are you, Brother Jack? So he'll be. So he's a month older. All right, come on, Brother Jack. Anybody? Brother? Jack's going to be 86 coming up here on his next birthday. Then snooking right behind him. And it'll be 86. Amen. Oh, my. I always told, I always accused, uh, I always accused Brother Snookum that Noah dropped him off. Amen. But, <laughs> amen. Thank you, dads. Thank you. Then we want to recognize the youngest dad. Is there a dad here this morning that's 25 or younger? 25 or younger? 30 or younger? 30 or younger? Oh, I, he's hiding back there. All right, come on, kid. <laughs> Amen. Lord Jesus. But it's amazing. It's amazing, though, you, you especially you, especially get children in from kindergarten and watch them grow all the way up and see how they change. From, and then if you see them give their life to Christ and then watch how God changes their life from there on, and, uh, it's, it's worth it all. It's worth it all. Man, we appreciate you. Happy Father's Day. All right, we'll have a gift for all the fathers as you leave this morning. I would give it to you now, but I'm afraid you'd sit there and play with it <coughs> while, while church is going on. But uh, we'll have a gift for all of you this morning. Pray for the young people as they sing. Oh, 
young people want to serve God, want to do something for the Lord. We encourage all of our young people to come out on Wednesday nights, be in their youth group, living for victory. And uh, so we would love to have you every Wednesday night here at the church at 730. Forget this Wednesday night, amen. Uh, we'll be having Camp Victory again on Wednesday night in the prayer meeting here in the church. If you have your Bible today, I want you to turn with us for a few minutes this morning to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. I don't know how other preachers are, but special days are seemingly hard for me. Uh, when you try to maybe put an emphasis on something special, but uh, I just want to try to honor the Lord and, and preach His Word, and uh, only can I do this by His help and by His Spirit, and uh, I believe with the state of affairs in our nation, the greatest thing that we are in danger of losing is our home. Years ago, they said, as goes the home, so goes the nation. Look at our nation. And I'm afraid that the result of looking at what we see in our nation is a result of what we see in many homes. And it breaks my heart. And it should break all of our hearts. Because we know that the devil is doing everything he can to destroy the family, the structure of the home, the makeup of the home. I may go against the grain today. But I believe that a home is made up of a man and a woman who are married and raising their family. Not two men, not two women. Amen. Our homes are being attacked. The most recent Disney movie, Lightyear, has been banned in a lot of countries but ours. Disney clarified and made it clear that they are going to do everything they can to push the sodomite image and it seems they are continuing so with light year our homes are under attack and now they're moving into the schoolhouses and uh, they are beginning with our smallest children and bringing in some of the most ungodly literature that would not be fit for an adult to read, much less a kindergartner and first, second, and third grader. <laughs> our, our homes are under attack. And this morning, I want to preach on this thought, saving our house. I might not be able to save your house, but I can sure work on saving mine. I will help you in every way I can to save your house. But if you and those within your house are not willing to do it, there's not much hope in saving it. 
And again, this is Father's Day, and I'm not trying to bring, a, bring you down, but I'm trying to get us to realize what's really happening. I'm afraid a lot of us, we just try to ignore it. And if you ignore it, it'll go away. It ain't going away. That's why we are where we are now. We've tried to ignore it. And it ain't going away. It's gotten worse. And so I believe by being here today, you realize that, especially dads, we realize that we need the Lord to help us as we try to lead our family. And we all need the Lord to lead our lives if they are to be lived for the glory of God. But today, the emphasis is on the fathers as the Word of God has placed a high demand and a high responsibility to all fathers. And with these demands and these responsibilities, we certainly need the, the Lord's wisdom, His power, and His help to fulfill these things that are placed upon us. I'm always amazed that the greatest parent is someone who has never had children. Isn't it amazing? I remember before we had children, I'd say, my kids are never, my kids, are, and I ended up with three girls. Wow. That's more than any man ought to bear. But, I, I mean, it's amazing, but we certainly need the help of God to be able to help our families. And so I want to look at a father this morning in the Bible that I think that we would do well by learning something from him. And in Hebrews chapter number 11 in verse number 7, the Bible says, By faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared in art to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Now, as we look at Noah, and I, I believe that we can learn something from him. And like us, Noah was just a man. And Noah had his ups and downs just like we do. We all go through life. And life has its ups and downs. But there was one thing that made Noah different. And that is found in Genesis 6, 8 when the Bible said, But Noah found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. And I'm thankful this morning for every dad in this building that has found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That you have met him, you know him, you love him, and you try your best to serve him. And if you want to be the dad that pleases the Lord, I believe this is the very first step, and that is getting saved by the grace of God. Being saved makes the difference in your life. And being saved will make the difference in your family's life if you follow God. Now the Bible tells us uh, right much about Noah. The Bible tells us uh, in Genesis chapter number 6 that God saw some things. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. I believe as we look at the day of Noah, we can see it in our day as well. And I was thinking about this and I thought, my when God looked at mankind and when God saw the heart of man, he saw that every thought of his heart 
was only evil continually. We're living in a world that is filled with wickedness and evil all around us. And if there's ever been a time that dads need to take a stand for God, it's right now. God saw. But then we find God's sorrow. In Genesis 6, 6, the Bible said, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Brother Chris, if God looked at Noah's day and saw the evil of man's heart was only evil continually, and his heart was grieved then, my, how his heart must be grieved today. God's sorrow, it grieved him at his heart. Not only God saw, and we see that God had sorrow, but then God said something in Genesis 6 and 7. And the Lord said, now, Noah's found grace. God looks at the world and he, he's grieved because of man's imagination, his thoughts of his heart, nothing but evil. And then God spoke. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. It was so bad, God said, I wish I'd never done it. Wow. And if it was that bad then, what would God be saying today as he looks at our world? I know it was bad in Noah's day. It's bad in our day. But thank God, even in the midst of what God saw and the sorrow and what he said about destroying man from off the earth, God saved. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 8, the Bible said, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. As God was looking all over this world and and he saw how wicked man had become, and it grieved him and, and his heart. And he said, I'm going to destroy man. But thank God there was one who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Thank God for his amazing grace that stepped into Noah's life while God was planning to destroy all life that dwelt upon the earth. God gave grace to Noah. You and I this morning, we are at, we, I believe we are at a crossroads. And if we don't do something now, there's no telling what may come further. But it's going to take dads and moms and families to take a stand against this wickedness. I saw this morning someone had posted an article that that movie I was talking about, Lightyear, took a plummet and the, at the box office. Hallelujah. Hope it becomes a big flop. And uh, all such wickedness as there is. <laughs> Sometimes I get to thinking about the old time preachers back years ago that used to preach against going to the movie shows. What would they do now? <laughs> that was back in the days when at the end of the, the cowboy flick, uh, the cowboy and his girlfriend would get together and at the end he'd pull his hat up. They didn't show nothing. They didn't show one thing. And preachers lamb blasted that mess. And here we are today. Look where we're at. 
We're at a crossroads, but I'm not even in the midst of all the wickedness. There was one man that found grace in the eyes of God. And Noah, his life was changed. Notice quickly, first of all, we see Noah's walk. Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 9 said, These are the generations of Noah. Now listen, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Hey, just a few verses, a couple of verses up, we just read God saw that the thoughts and the imaginations of man's heart was evil continually. But here's a man who did not condone, nor did he get involved in the wickedness of his day. He found grace in the eyes of God, and God said he was perfect in his generations. Amen. And Noah walked with God. Hey, I don't care how wicked things become. That is no excuse for you and I to roll over and play dead. That is no excuse for you and I not to stand up for Jesus, for you and I to walk with God. I don't care how wicked things get. Noah his walk. Upon finding grace, Noah began his walk with God. And that's what happens when you get saved, amen, is you start walking with God, living for God, doing the things that God would have you to do in your life. Not only Noah's walk, but then Noah's work. And that's where we pick up Hebrews 11. And the Bible tells us there that by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. In other words, things that were getting ready to happen had never been seen. Had, people had no idea about, but God gave a warning to Noah. And when he was warned of God, you know what, you know what happened to Noah? When, Noah? when God warned Noah, this is what happened. It moved Noah with fear. He said as Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. He began to do something. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, I, I can't remember, maybe it was Sandra this morning giving prayer requests. She said, I'm afraid of the kind of world that my grandchildren are going to grow up in if Jesus don't come. That's what happened to Noah. When he saw things that hadn't happened as yet, it moved him with fear. Amen. And the Bible said that he prepared an ark to the saving, listen at this, not the saving of the world, the saving of his house. I believe that Brother Rick, I believe that Noah had concern for everybody that he knew. But his greatest concern, his house. <laughs> I've heard of, of, of several preachers over the years that their own family went to hell while they was out trying to win everybody else's family. They neglected their own family. I'm afraid that happens a lot. We're trying to do the right thing, but we forget God's given us our house. Amen? But Noah prepared an ark to the saving of his house. You'll not find in there anywhere that he said he prepared an ark to, for the saving of the world. But his house. He didn't know what everybody else's house was going to do, but he knew that he wanted his house to be saved. That's what I'm preaching about this morning, saving our home. If there's anything worth saving, it's our home. Oh, God, help us. Noah began to work as God moved upon his heart. And no, not only Noah's walk and Noah's Work, but notice Noah's witness. 
In 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 5, the Bible said, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person of uh, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in a flood upon the world of the ungodly. The Bible tells us here that Noah walked with God. He was a preacher of righteousness. The Bible said that he was perfect in his generation. There was something about his life after the grace of God came into his life. He was a witness to all that were around him. But most importantly, he was a witness to his family. Today's Father's Day. The emphasis is on fathers, homes, children. It is, it is greatly known that a home without a dad that the majority of the times the children go in the wrong direction. I mean, when I was growing up, I got in the wrong direction, but it wasn't easy to get there. It was not easy, Brother Greg, for me to get there because I had a daddy, and I miss him with all my heart. I had a daddy that loved us, and I mean, I, I figured that he must have knew everything about us. Couldn't get by with nothing. And I look back now in my life, and I'm so thankful that I had a dad. I don't believe I would be where I am right now had it not been for my dad and my mom who loved us and trained us and brought us up right Noah wanted to save his house. He was a just man, perfect in his generations that he walked with God. Here we find that Noah had three sons. I had three daughters, have three daughters. Noah had three sons. Some of y'all had sons. I didn't ever have the privilege to have a son and I, when I get to heaven, I reckon the Lord will show me why. Probably kept me out of prison. Say amen right there. But anyhow. But he had three sons. And uh, I believe that these sons were probably born after that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Looking at the scriptures it would have been about, he would have been about 480 years old when his family started and 600 years old when the flood came. According to Genesis 7, 6, the Bible said, and Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. And so Noah was 950 years old when he died. Genesis chapter 9, verse 29. But I believe his most important years was during the building of the ark. The Bible tells us that it was a wicked day in which he lived and these three boys needed to know right from wrong and that the Lord of heaven was their only hope in their life. Amen. Can you imagine how it must have been by while he built that ark? Maybe the boys were mocked because of their daddy. I'm sure my girls probably got mocked some because of their daddy. You wouldn't believe that, would you? But uh, I, I'm sure they probably were mocked because of Noah's walk and because of Noah's work and because of Noah's witness by the other boys and girls of that day. Maybe they would come home and they would tell Noah and Noah would sit with them and tell them about the Lord and what God was going to do and encourage them to trust God and take him at his word. You ask, well, did it work? Did all that Noah do, did it work? 
for his boys? Did it work for his house? Well, let the Bible tell you what happened. In Genesis chapter 7 and verse number 1, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Verse number 7 says, And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. All of Noah's work, all these years, 120 years, he spent working and preaching and, and building that ark as God had told him to do. 120 years. But yet at the end of it all, his house was saved. The day that God invited them into the ark, thank God Noah went in. Noah's wife went in. His three sons went in. And his three daughter-in-laws went in. Eight people went into the ark. I want to say this in closing. I want to say that if you work all of your Christian life serving God and win your family, you've done a good thing. Today I want to encourage you dads. Take time with your children. Not just while they're young and at home, but all of your life. We try to spend as much time with our kids and grandkids as we can. I know sometimes my wife, she wants us, I think she wants them at the house every night. And I love them. I love them. But not every night. <laughs> but she, I think about it and, and sometimes she'll say, why is it, why, 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 why don't our kids want to do nothing with us? I'm like, Deb. How often did your mom and my parents do things with us? I said, we had our life and friends and we went. I said, that's just the way it is. But I want to spend as much time with them as I can. If they came every night, it wouldn't bother me. I mean, it, listen, it'd just be the way it is. But take time with your children. I think about yesterday was Spring's birthday. And she's my younger daughter. She turned 30 yesterday. My youngest one turned 30. My others are in the ancient years. <laughs> but, uh, but I, I mean, I can't believe, I mean, I, I, where, where have all those years gone? I mean, it don't seem like it's been that long, Brother Ray, since I was taking her fishing and, and doing all those things. Now she's grown and got a family of her own, and I mean, just wide open. I'm glad with all of my children. I'm thankful for all the days that we had that we were able to spend together, but I still want to be in their life, and I want to help them. I know sometimes they may get tired of daddy and mama uh, trying to, you know, keep telling them. I know my mama. I love my mama, and I don't care if my young ones are older. And I remember when we lived in, in Germany, and I talked to my mama. She said, keep a hold of them children. I'm like, okay, mama. I guess she thought I was just going to tear them loose. And, but even now, when, when I call her, she says, y'all be careful now. I mean, she's, she's still my mama. I'm still her boy, no matter how old I am. And I'm thankful that she still loves me like that and still cares about me. I will never forget when I called her after I got saved that she was the first one I called. And she answered the phone. I said, Mom, I want to tell you something. I said, I got saved tonight. And she said, thank God I won't have to worry about you no more. <laughs> well, she didn't have to worry about me not being saved, but she still still worries about me. But I want to be my, there with my kids. I want to be there and help them. I want my grandchildren to know. And so I encourage you to take time with your children, not while 
just while they're at home and while they're young, but all their lives. Be a witness to them all of their lives and all of your lives. Noah's sons were probably a hundred years old or better during the time of the building of the ark. But Noah, no doubt, never stopped being a witness to them, never stopped telling them about how good the grace of God was in his life but there was something I believe that they saw in their daddy, something that God had done in his life that caused them to trust the same God for their life. And when the time came, they moved into the ark right with their dad. Can I say to you this morning, God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He can help you and me as he did Noah Amen, and countless others that have raised their children, have seen God work in their lives as well. I believe the most important verse to Noah was this. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He saved his house. Our hope is not in this world, but our hope is in the grace of God and the God of heaven saving our homes. Our homes really need the help of God. I know when we were married and then after Ocean was born, of course, when she was born, Deborah and I, neither one were saved, living wicked lives and of course, she had kind of changed her life because of the baby, and I'm thankful that she did. But had it not been for the grace of God, you ever think about that little word, if? If it hadn't been for the grace of God, who knew what would have happened? How bad things could have gotten. And I'm thankful today that we found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And we've tried to walk with the Lord and do the will of God in our lives and try to be a witness to our children. Have we been perfect? No. They can tell you we by a long shot. We've never been perfect. We're not the perfect parents, but we do love our children. And we love them and, and we wanted them to do right, and even though sometimes they didn't, and and it hurt us because they wouldn't do what we asked them. And uh, then sometimes they thought they had to learn things the hard way, and they did. But I'm glad God has done something in our hearts. This morning, if there's anything worth saving in 2022, it's our homes. Put up a barrier around your home. Put up a, a fortress around your home, but do everything you can to keep the devil out of it. Keep wickedness out of it. Do not embrace it because it will not go well. God, help us this morning. Father, I thank you for this service and, Lord, for this day as we celebrate Father's Day. Thank you, Lord, for every dad that's been in this building, those who've been listening and watching. God, my heart breaks as we see the results of sin and wickedness across our land. How sin is condoned and paraded in every aspect. And then, Lord, when we stand up and say something biblically about it, they say that we're doing nothing but causing division and it's called hate speech in many ways. But God, it's not that we hate the people that are living in wickedness. God, we love them and you love them. You gave your life for them. Lord, we do not like their lifestyles. We do not like their, the way they live their lives. Lord, there are people today that all they need is the grace of God. Lord, I was wicked, lost and undone until the grace of God. Lord, I know that if they could just get to the grace of God and get saved, the Lord, their lives would change. But God, help us to lead our children in the way they should go. You tell us that in your word. Train up a child 
in the way that it should go. God, help us to do that. Thank you, Lord, for every family in our church. Thank you for every dad. Lord, if there's somebody in this building today that's not saved, I pray, Lord, that today will be the day they give their life to you. Please, God, speak to every heart during this invitation. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. While we stand, what number, brother? 166. Maybe, Dad, you want to grab your family and get them around this altar and pray for them. Ask God to help you lead them in the right way. If your children are not saved, I invite you to get around this altar and pray that God will get a hold of their hearts. Whatever the need is this morning, thank God the answer is found in the grace of God. And while we sing, you just find the Lord here today. Jesus saves. Noah is a testimony to that. If you need to be saved, today's a good day. We're going to sing the second verse. You mind the Lord this morning. Our Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the word of God. I pray, Lord, that it will continue to speak to our hearts. Lord, as we leave the building, as we're out and about today, God, that your word would continue to help us. Lord, that we would lean upon thee. And Lord, help us, God, teach us thy ways that we may instruct our families. And Lord, do that which is pleasing in your sight, that we can be a witness to our families. God, save the children that are lost. Save the moms and dads that are lost. God, have your will, have your way, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. I want to say thank you for being here on this Father's Day today, and uh, as you leave this morning, Dad, we all the men, we got you a, a small gift of